All right. So um, what I'm going to talk about today is joint work with uh, Eric Laszlo and Eric Roman. So. And we posted a paper on the archive about a couple of months ago. I encourage you to check it out. You should be interested in what I'm going to say. So, um, I would like to start with an abstract of our project and then move to two very concrete examples so that we get a better idea of what's going on. That part is the following. So, in our project, what we do is uh, construct a model for the entire category on the function in one surface sigma is a function in one surface I call this model C and sigma so this is a digit category which is conjecturally quite equivalent to the Fukai category but we haven't proved the conjecture yet and the next thing we do is that we use this model to prove a homological mirror symmetry So let me remind you, uh, homological mirror symmetry is a conjecture that Kutsiewicz uh, put forward, I think, in 94. And let me remind you what is the setup. So we are supposed to be given a, an algebraic variety uh, X a symplectic manifold excludo and if x and excludo are mirror partners we are supposed to be able to prove that the derived category of clearing sheet of an x is quasi equal to the entire category so um, <coughs> what we have in our project is that for us x is a degeneration of an elliptic curve so it's what we call a necklace of two ones. Let me draw a, a picture. So we will have uh, a chain of two ones glued in this way. And uh, the mirror, uh, the symplectic side, will be a punctured toys. So let me call it Xn, where n is the number of components. This is going to be x n, where n is the number of punctures. And what we prove in our paper is that per Xn is quasi-equivalent to CPM X middle N. So if you believe, as we do, that this is quasi-equivalent to the entire category of this puncture torus, uh, we obtain homological near symmetry. Let me comment on perf Xn. So perf is a subcategory of the food that are category of the sheets is a better behaved substitute that we use because Xn is singular it's into the category of complexes of vector bundles uh, rough. so uh, this is the kind of the abstract of my talk um, the first example I want to discuss with you is a kind of a toy example it is just homological mirror symmetry for P1 so this will kind of motivate the story I'm going to tell you next. So the way I'm going to obtain this homological mirror symmetry statement will be uh, composing a chain of equivalence of categories. So the first category we are going to consider is in the algebra of geometric form and is simply the derived category of current sheets of P1. The second category is in the world of representation theory and is the category of representations of this field. Okay, we have two vertices and two arrows between them. <coughs> the equivalence between these two guys is a famous theorem uh, uh, of Bennison at the end of the 70s. Uh, I mean, which proved more generally for projective spaces. Uh, and the functor here is very, it's very simple. Let, let not me write it down, but, but it's very simple to understand what's going on. Uh, the third category lives in yet a different world, which is the world of shift theory. So this is in turn equivalent 
tu ne kategoriju o konstrukti boš šis over s1 stratified by f1 so uh, what is a constructed boss sheet constructed boss sheet is a sheet of complex vector spaces by that dimensional complex vector spaces which is constant when restricted on the two sets of the stratification so when restricted on the point and then on the complement of the point is uh, quite easy to convince oneself that the datum of such a sheet is exactly encoded in the representation of this group what we will have we will take its stock at zero its stock at f1 and then we will have to uh, uh, restriction maps. Okay? So, uh, these are the first three categories. Uh, finally, the fourth category, which will appear, unfortunately, on, on that board, is uh, lives in the world of symplectic geometry. Uh, how do I read it? Sorry. Uh, so, the all right, so uh, the fourth category, as I was telling you, lives in the world of symplectic geometry, and so we make contact finally with homological mirror symmetry. And uh, um, so let me call it the Fukaya category of this minus one with respect to lambda, I, I'll explain all these objects and what are all these objects in a second. So, uh, the status one is simply a cylinder. Lambda is uh, a subspace of this guy, which is made up of the zero section and the cotangent fiber at zero. Okay? So, what do I mean by, by this expression? I'm looking at exact arrangements which have in an appropriate sense asymptotic to this shape that lives in this size one. So let me draw one for you, if I manage. So they can go like this, they can wrap around perhaps a couple of times, but then they need to be asymptotic to this shape. Is it, is it clear? Are there questions about that? Right? Uh, okay, so the equivalence between that category, category over there and this category uh, comes from uh, uh, theorems of Nadler and Zaslow and Nadler, which give us a way exactly of understanding the Kaya category in terms of constructible sheet, the Kaya category of a cotangent bundle, in this case we have this star one, in terms of constructible sheet of the This is exactly what's going on here. Are they so, both Nadler's? Oh. Nadler, Zaslow, Nadler? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. Great. Uh, so, now if we read uh, this chain of equivalences, starting from here and ending there, we start from the derived category of the sheet, and we land uh, with the Fukaya category of uh, the Swan, and so we, we obtain a homological neurosymmetry kind of statement. Um, let me convince you that this chain of equivalences doesn't realize any equivalence, uh, any random equivalence, actually it fits in very well with our intuition of how mirror symmetry should work, in particular in the SOC picture. So let me just uh, say a couple of words about this, then briefly. And the fact that this is the case, I'll write a couple of names on the board. So the fact that this equivalent that I just described does fit in with uh, the specification of homological mirror symmetry is proved both more by more Fang for projective spaces and then there is generalization by Fang, Liu, Roman, and Glasnow for public varieties. So what's going on? We have P1 over here In the SOC picture of mirror symmetry, we are supposed to find the torus vibration on this guy. So in this case, this will be given simply by the moment map. I'm secretly removing the zero to infinity, but let's not worry about this. Then I'm supposed to dualize fiber-wise this torus vibration. What I see on the other side is something that looks roughly, roughly like this. So as, uh, as the, the circles become smaller and smaller on the left hand side, they will explode in size on the right hand side. And further, uh, so this is S by Z. Further, 
actually see, it gives us a prescription given a line bundle on the left hand side, let me call it L, to draw, uh, gives us a description for drawing a Lagrangian on the other side, and this Lagrangian will look exactly something like this. So, uh, um, something along these lines, and uh, uh, what was true is precisely that this chain of equivalences reproduces the SOC picture of homological mirror symmetry, and so it's legitimately a, a mirror symmetry state. So, this is the case of P1. Now, uh, I want to move uh, to our project. Um, first, let me single out uh, a couple of the features that make this example so appealing to me is that first we were able to encode the algebraic geometry of P1 in an entirely combinatorial object which is this lambda over here so lambda is this, uh, this, this guy, a skeleton lambda is simply a graph a simple covariant graph and all we really needed to do to set up this chain of equivalence was knowing its, let me say, its combinatorial type so we encoded the algebraic geometry of P1 in this combinatorial object this graph, because this subspace leaving it is as one. And the second thing is that dealing with the Fukai category was especially easy because we could use the Nader Zaslow dictionary to translate the Fukai category in, uh, in uh, terms of constructible sheets, which are uh, much more uh, uh, amenable to computation. Than that is. Okay? So this, these are the two features that I would like to explore in the next example, in the necklace of the one example. Okay? Are there questions about this? All right. So let me move. Let me move to the next example. Um, so again, for concreteness, I'll focus on one specific, what I call necklace of P1, and it is this guy. So we have a P1 over here, and we have a P1 over here. So, um, two components is what is called by some people a banana curve, and, uh, and we are, I'm going to explain to you how we can uh, obtain a homological mirror symmetry statement for this guy. So the first question is, what is going to be the combinatorial object that allow me to encode this configuration? And I explained to you before that somehow this copy of B1 contributes uh, this guy, this lambda. Uh, this other copy of B1 contributes the same thing. So it's pretty natural to guess that uh, the graph, right, the combinatorial object that is going to encode this configuration will be obtained by joining together the upward point in gray and the downward point, point in gray. Okay? So this is uh, uh, our first guess that the combinatorial object is this guy, is this graph. Right? These are actually ribbon graphs because they come uh, with an embedding in a surface, in a sense. Okay? But let's not worry about this, it's just a technical point. So this is our gamma. Uh, note that gamma doesn't live anymore in a cotangent bundle. Gamma lives in a torus minus two punctures. Let me draw it for you. So this is gamma, and gamma is over here. And uh, you can convince yourself it's really just a deformation of the graph of a torus with two punctures. Okay? So, uh, what we would like to add is being able to describe the Fukai category of distorus with two punctures in terms of some kind of shift theory. This is exactly one of the features I, I liked in the previous case. And so, one guess could be whether we look at constructible shifts over this uh, graph of the, this uh, one dimensional uh, space. This doesn't quite work. What works and what is uh, described in the paper is that we can define a sheaf of digit categories to call it CPM so such 
such that locally CPM is given by a category of constructible sheets. So what do I mean by this? Let me draw again my gamma. Uh, so here is gamma. We can decompose this gamma into open sets. For instance, this is, let me call this U1. This other open set is uh, U2. And CPM U1, so CPM is a sheet, is a sheet over this uh, topological space. So we can compute the section of U1. This is going to be sheets on S1, stratified by a point. So it's going to be exactly uh, a category for thirty-two sheets, and the same, of course, is true for U2. Uh, okay, so that's it. Yeah. So uh, our conjecture is that um, the global section. Let me write for you. So, so conjecture: CPM gamma is uh, quasi equivalent to the Fukaya category of uh, the torus minus the points and further we prove that CPM gamma so this is a theorem CPM gamma so the global section of the sheet are was equivalent uh, to perf x where x is the uh, banana curve um, alright so um, let me comment on a couple of things. So the first thing is that we can actually define CPM for any for any graph of this sort, for any ribbon graph. And so not just for a puncture torus, but for a puncture Riemann surface of any genus. And so this allows us to construct a model for the Fukaya category of a puncture Riemann curve of any genus. I insisted on this example because it's the one that is most relevant for topological mirror symmetry. Uh, for this statement over here. Uh, so, and the last thing I would like to do for you is convince you that this equivalence that was motivated essentially by looking at the combinatorics of this graph actually again fits very well within the SYZ picture of duality. So let me just draw a picture for you, and this is, will be the last thing that I'm going to tell you today. Um, so, the heuristics that justifies that the mirror of a banana curve is a torus minus two points, again, uh, comes from uh, uh, XYZ. So, here is my banana curve. I have a vibration in, uh, in uh, uh, S1, which has two singularities, over here and over here. So the pre-image on all these points would be an S1, but would be just a point over these special points in the base. And uh, when we typolize, we are supposed to consider cir fiberwise circles that have uh, uh, the inverse size of these circles. So uh, what we get if you believe that we should consider a circle, a circle, the rule of a circle of radius zero, a circle with infinite radius would be exactly a torus with two punctures corresponding to these two points. I don't know if this is making sense. We can talk more about it in your future. So that's all. Thanks a lot.